I'm Jacqueline Wilson and I'm going to read you a little extract from my brand new book, Dancing the Charleston. It's about this girl, Mona, and she lives in a tiny cottage on a big estate with her auntie who's a dressmaker. And all around them there are the Somersets who own this fantastic huge house and wonderful grounds. So Mona doesn't really quite fit in but she gets to know all the Somersets and when a new Somerset person inherits the whole estate, uh, Mona finds her life turned upside down. So I'll start reading you a tiny extract. Auntie was in her workroom getting started on her new orders. Hello dear, did you have a lovely time at the manor? It was just as well they invited you because after the shop shut I had a meeting with the two girls who sew for me and then the train was delayed and I didn't get home till nearly 10 o'clock, she said. I've been so worried about you if you're all on your own. So come on, tell me all about it. Were they nice to you? Did they make you feel welcome? I nodded, shuffling very close to Auntie until I was actually leaning on her. Hey, give me room to sew. What's the matter? You look a bit droopy. Did you and Marcella stay up half the night talking? I had to share with Esmeralda, I say. She's a bit of a madam, that girl, said Auntie. Far too grown up for her age. I hope she didn't put any ideas into your head. She was all right, I said. Mr. Benjamin is going to throw a sea creature's ball and Esmeralda's going as a mermaid. Auntie snorted. I can imagine, she said. What's she going to wear on her front? I don't know. Desiree is helping her with her costume. Oh well, that says it all, said Auntie. What's her mother thinking of? Barbara's letting Bruno be a water baby, completely bare, I said. Oh, she's never. He's not a baby. He's a proper little boy. It's not decent, said Auntie. She's never making poor little Marcella go around Starkers too. Marcella's wearing the frock you made her. She's going to be a fairy. And she'll look very pretty, even if I say so myself. So I suppose Mr. Benjamin wants me to help with the rest of the costumes. I'm up to my eyes in work for Harrods, but I'll do my best, though I can't work miracles. Well, actually, I think Barbara's doing their costumes, I said awkwardly. Barbara? But she can't even sew straight. Yes, I know. We can't have her making poor Mr. Benjamin look ridiculous. I can at least make his costume, said Auntie. I took a deep breath. He's gone to a dressmaker in London, I said in a rush. Auntie frowned. I'm a dressmaker in London, in Harrods, the best department store in Britain, she pointed out. Yes, but I think this other person is French. You know how fancy people think anything French is better. They even cook their beef the French way and give it a funny name, I said. Don't be upset, Auntie. You wouldn't have time to make heaps of costumes, not with all your other work. Auntie sniffed. Have they invited you to this ball, Mona? Yes, but I'm not sure I want to go. Sounds a bit silly. I wish it was a proper ball, like in Cinderella, I said. Well, that wouldn't be Mr. Benjamin's way, would it? It was the nearest auntie had ever come to criticising him. I'll make your costume, Mona. What would you like to go as? Well, I'd have liked to be a mermaid, but Esmeralda's going to be one, I said, sighing. You can be one too, said auntie. Yes, but I won't look nearly as good. She's got much longer, thicker hair than me, and Desiree is giving her a green beaded dress for a tail. I'll make you a better mermaid costume. Just you wait and see, said Auntie, her chin up. Will you really, I asked. And what will you go as? Don't be ridiculous, she said, starting to sketch a design. You're invited. Mr. Benjamin said you must come, I said. Oh, he did, did he? Well, Mr. Benjamin's very kind but I'm declining. You shall go though, Mona, and you'll be wearing the best costume of the lot. You just wait and see.